Victory Road. Everybody has a story to tell. How you got to heaven when you came from hell. Victory Road. Where miracles unfold on Victory Road. Won't you come with me to Victory down Victory? Hi, and welcome to Victory Road. This is where lives are changed, forever changed, and souls are saved. And victory stories are rebirthed over and over by listening to our fabulous guests and their various victory stories. So I want to start off, first of all, by saying Isaiah 35, verse 8 through 10. It says, a highway will be there, a roadway, and it will be called the highway of holiness. And I found a really cool verse, another one. There's many verses regarding victory and that through God we are victorious warriors. And Proverbs 11, verse 14, it talks about that with many counseling, with many counselors, um, brings victory. So if you're going through something right now, hopefully we are one of the counselors that's going to help lead you right back on your victory road by listening to our fabulous guest today. Again, I am so honored to have with us Superstar, who started acting very, very, very young, and I believe at the age of 12, he started the fabulous Donna Reed Show. And progressively just branched out, started a singing career with his sister that was on the show with him, and has grown to do many other fabulous things. He's also a published author, written 16 books. Um, his list of credits go on forever. And I am proud to announce we have our wonderful Paul Peterson with us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. It is. I am so happy that you were here, and we have so many victory stories with you. Oh, gosh, I'll say. The one, the one big one that I wanted to share, what we're going to get to, um, he also is the CEO and founder of a fabulous organization called A Minor Consideration, which I'm going to let Paul explain to you how he helps all of these wonderful child stars get back on their victory road. So let's go back to your past real okay. quick. So I hear that you were born in Glendale. I was, Glendale, California. So you're original surfer dude, right? <laughs> Darn did near. Did you ever surf? <laughs> Darn near. No, never did. No? Um, yeah, that's where life started. Uh, then we moved back to Iowa briefly. Uh, you know, the post-war years were very difficult economic times. And then Lockheed called back my family, my dad and my grandpa, my, my mom. Mm -hmm. And we moved back to uh, Burbank, and that put me dangerously close to Hollywood. Yes, and for did. a kid who could sing and dance and loved to do it, uh, it wasn't long before uh, people began to notice that I could sing and uh, I could dance and you know, shows at Hollywood Bowl and Wadsworth Theater over at the VA. And then came an open audition over at Disney in 1955 for this little creature called Mouseketeer. That's right, you yep. did the Walt Disney, he was one of the Originals. original Mouseketeers. Yeah. Well, my claim to fame on that show is that I was the first kid fired. Because, oh. Oh, it's absolutely true, uh, seven weeks. I, I didn't know that kid actors aren't supposed to be children. You know, I was a nine-year-old boy full of life and studios are fabulous places to roam around in. And it wasn't long before they had enough of me. And that was okay because I learned a very powerful uh, uh, professional lesson that the discipline is important. By the time I was discharged, that was the word they used, <laughs> uh, I had an agent, Lola Moore, who was an institution in Hollywood, and started going on auditions. And Lee, I got more than my share of the work. And the parts got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until uh, by 57, sounds so funny, a couple of years, I was doing a big movie called Houseboat with Cary Grant and Sophia Loren. In 1957. Yeah, 1957. And it was a very big hit. 
And the following year, uh, when I auditioned for the Donna Reed Show, uh, Donna loved the fact that I still have that Iowa accent. I say fur and get and stuff like that. And Donna's an Iowa girl, and uh, she called Cary Grant and said, how was it to work with this kid? And he said, well, you'll have your hands full, but he's pretty good. Hmm. So uh, th I got a job that lasted eight years, unheard of. So there Donna I was. Reed Show yeah. was on eight years. Yeah, I grew up in front of America from age 12 to 20. Wow. So yeah. you started your singing career at, si <coughs> at 16? At the professional part, yes. And left it and went on the road. Um, what I'd like to do is take a break. Sure. Hold that thought right there. You bet. We're going to bring our fabulous Victory Road Band in to, to sing a tune, give us their fabulous gift of song, what they do every month. And then we're going to come back. And so for our director, you can prepare the first clip, if you would, after, after our band. Thank you. What you say, I say. What you pray, I pray. What you pray, I pray. Jesus only did what he saw you do. He would only say what he heard you speak. He would only move when he felt you say, follow in my spirit, how am I supposed to walk without you, when everything that Jesus made is in surrender, how am I supposed to live without you, cause you are always worthy, and you are always good. You are always good. Yeah. You are always good. You are always good. You are always good. Wait, go, I go. What you say, I say. What you pray. We are so blessed to have Phil Jones, Cheryl Jones, and Anthony Salerno. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we, we, Lee, we did that opening for every season. So there are eight different versions of that. And of course, I start out at this side until suddenly I'm taller than Donna and taller than Shelley and taller than Carl. Now, you had your real, your real life sister on yes, the show, Patty, right? Yes, the last three years of the Donna Reed show. She was the little orphan that we discovered in the park across That's the street. That's what I thought, that she was your real sister. Yes, she really is, real, uh, Patty Peterson. True I blood. call her, she's my Trisha bug. And she came on because of audience reaction and stayed three years. 
So it was great fun. So that was the last part of your run on yes. the Donna Reed show, your sister. That's what right. What a great, great thrill to work with your own sister well, on the show. Well, exactly. And of course, you know, look at that cast. Donna Reed, Academy Award winner. Carl Betts, uh, Emmy for Just yes. the Defense. Shelley, a two-time Emmy nominee. And then, like I tell people, then there was Paul Chop Liver. <laughs> no, don't say that nah, about my you know friend I'm Paul teasing. Peterson. Paul is amazing. And I figured out today that I knew that we had worked together. And yes. we actually did a show together uh, that Mickey Sonardi That's produced right. That's called, right. Um, Showstopper. Showstopper. That's right. Um, um, to, but, can we run another clip? Sure, why real not? Real quick. I know we got a couple of more. Our, <laughs> our viewing audience wants to see more. Well, I think we have one uh, of me singing on, a, on an old show you remember called Shindig. Oh, okay. And I think that may be next. Um, Does well, our we'll director see. want to roll some more clips? <laughs> He's got to find it. <laughs> Oh, this is... Finally made it. Well, he was pretty far away when it happened. Europe or someplace like that. That's his story. Yeah. I guess we better go down and say hello. Not me. He is our father. I'm never going to say hello to him. Goodbye, baby. Oh, come on. Mother would have wanted us to. <laughs> we don't have no mother. She's How fun. Now, the kids, I, I should tell you, little Charlie Herbert was the little boy. Uh, he starred in The Fly, 13 Steps. And Mimi Gibson, uh, who's been friends since that day, from 1957, and, and you've me. always been adorable. Always, oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, literally, I'm not flirting. I don't want his wife to hurt me. Yeah. But, um, he honestly, there are pictures of you. I remember you doing some films that he looked like a very young Elvis Presley. And I bet everybody compared you to a young well, they, Elvis Presley, they, didn't well, they? He called me little brother. You know, we Elvis went, did? Yeah, Elvis did. Uh, we went to the same barber, J.C. Bring, before he was murdered. Uh, uh, you know, fast cars. Uh, I would pull up to Jay's shop in the Cobra, and he'd poke his head out and say, Hey, little brother, how you doing? So Big, he knew great it, talent. too. Well, you know, the, it's funny the way life works. Yeah. Shelley Fabre did three movies with Elvis, um, and the only actress who could say that. So she was very close to him. And of course, the years went on. And we had a chance to, to visit. And Shelley, of course, was very close to him. Uh, and I was, you know, the pesky uh, younger brother. <laughs> but it was just part of, of a remarkable period in my life when I, I, can, I can honestly say I appreciated it while we were doing it. Right. What I wasn't aware of, like many people who've gone to have an extravagant dinner, is eventually they give you a bill. And in my case, in 1966, when the Donna Reed Show went off the air, I was the quintessential American boy, well-groomed, well-mannered, and the world had changed. There were half a million troops in Vietnam. Uh, it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and I didn't fit anymore. And it was time to get out of town, like Mickey Rooney told me, get out of town and find something else to do. So that lesson was a hard lesson to because I thought I was supposed to be Cary Grant. I really did believe that that's, that was going to and be my life. And what age? Well, I was from age 20 to 24. Okay. But I did finally get out of town and found my balance in Connecticut, got back to school, started writing books, and before I knew it, I had some pretty successful books in the marketplace. So that was a new discovery. 16 and it, books. Well, altogether, yes, when I stretched them out. A published author of mm -hmm. 16 books. And That's I worked big. for Simon and, Schuster, Simon and Schuster and Random House. But the key book was a book called uh, Walt, Mickey, and Me, which was meant to be a funny look back at the Mouseketeers, all of whom I was still friendly with. And when I came back to Southern California to interview them, I found echoes of my own past that I thought I had put to bed 
that were still causing troubles in the Mouseketeers' lives. And that got me to thinking about mm. the commonality of being uh, a has-been at age 25. It's a difficult thing to deal with. Hollywood is, can be really tough, and, oh. and especially with a child star. Absolutely. As many years as you were on, on the air, it's hard to readjust to come back into the real world. Well, it real is world. because it, people don't let you. I can remember on my 10th book, Walt Mickey and Because they want to see you as a star well, I, but, forever, but as how, Jeff, right? Yes, but how silly. I remember saying to a woman in, in a Cleveland audience who said to me, I'm there to promote my book. Well, gee, don't you miss it, Paul? And I said, excuse me. If you think that being a, an author of 10 books is somewhat less than being a kid on a television show, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with you not me. That's right. And uh, it was an important time in my life because my books were mine. I wasn't like other actors who speak other people's words and, and lie about their feelings. Right. That, was right. the, that was me. Right. And of course later, as I gathered together former Kid Star stories, there came a day, which is the whole point of me talking with you today, when uh, January 19th, uh, 1990, I woke up to hear the news that my life friend, Rusty Hamer from the Danny Thomas show, had killed himself. Oh. Now, mm. Rusty and I had been very close, and I knew where he lived, I knew he was in trouble, and I never took the time to go to DeRitter, Louisiana to see him. And I, that the very moment I recognized that in myself, I'm, Lee, I'm telling you, tap, tap, tap on my shoulder, and a path was shown to me, beginning, middle, and end, and this feeling came over me, said, I have a job for you. That was God. Whoa, of yep. course it was. That was God calling. And um, you know, you get a calling like that, you better answer, because there's no escape. It hasn't been a smooth road, many twists and turns, but the goal which I didn't know then in 1990, but know now, mm -hmm. is that it's not just famous kids in show business who have such a difficult life. It's children all over the world. And my focus has been, or came to be, once we established a minor consideration, working children. And people don't understand that 250 million children go to work every day around this earth. There's five and a half million children working in America. Every day, five and a half million. Well, that's not supposed to be a kid's life. This isn't opening a lemonade stand. I'm talking kids that are picking our food. Mm. And what I discovered as the minor consideration matured and grew was that children in America have been exempt from federal child labor law since 1938. If you work in show business or in agriculture or you work for a nonprofit, say you're doing a play, you know, like the glory of Christmas or something, mm -hmm. you're exempt from federal child labor law. Well, what that means is if you work in a cool state like California, which has very progressive uh, and enforced labor law for kids, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But what if you're in North Carolina or Yugoslavia or Mexico or Brazil? The sad truth is, and I say this to people to make the point, there are more rules for animals in show business than for kids. That's got to change. How sad. How yes, truly it is. truly sad. Well, and so I just wanted to repeat so the audience could understand his organization is called a minor consideration. That's it. And I remember you calling me years ago and referring, uh, I don't know if we can tell names well, we right now. We names. should be anonymous about that. But... Uh, a child star that's on a very popular show, um, you had said that you had actually gone in um, and pulled the needles out of her arm because she was ODing on heroin. Uh, another child star that yeah. was suffering and did not know how to put a Band-Aid on it, couldn't find relief, and, and so she turned to drugs, Well, uh, which is the, what a lot of them do, and that's yes. what your organization does? Is well, to, that's one of the things we do, but we also provide emotional support. You know, you've heard of group therapy sessions. Right. Well, imagine a living room 
with 20 kid stars in there, each of them aware of the other's performing ability, and yet sharing those key features, early fame, money that may have been used by the Being parents. Pampered, people and, making decisions right, for and you. And then throwing you out. Because nobody yeah. prepares you for the next adventure. And the story of my life is, in fact, the next adventure. And after all this time, Lee, you know what I found out I was really good at? And I've done some OK things. I'm really good at drafting and passing legislation for kids. Legislators across the country, and in fact, at the United Nations, where I served as a special delegate, open their doors to me. And it's curious. They call me Jeff to my face. Jeff Stone. That's Jeff, okay. the character on Donna Reed. The character on Donna Reed, but that's OK, because I'm in the office. Right. And I have a good pitch. I can do it in an elevator in 30 seconds, or I can do a three-hour speech, as I have done several times. And people respond to this. But this is a very difficult road to hoe because children don't vote and they don't have money. In the most of the world, children are the property of their parents. In fact, they're called chattel. They are no different than a car or a cow or a house. They belong absolutely to their parents. So the children in show business have no rights. Is that what you're trying well, to say? Well, they do now because... Because uh, of you. Well, me Being and a whole paladin. bunch of former kid stars. You know, there's a lot of former kid stars So you have a whole group. team that's helping you oh, help absolutely. others? In my particular group, there's 600. That's in and around oh, my, my age. Goodness. Our oldest member is uh, Diana Sarah Carey, 96 years old. She was baby Peggy back in the silent era. And now there's a whole new crop of youngsters who are 30 years younger than I, about 170 so far, who have agreed among themselves and shared with me that they will continue this, this mission. So can I condense it because we're coming to an <coughs> end already? Um, before we come to an end, I do want to show photos that we've scanned in of Paul Peterson. Yeah. I want to show, just go ahead and put them up, please. Oh, how um, fine. Of photos. Harry Grant and Sophia um, Lauren. And Garrett. We can go ahead and talk sure. while he's putting up the, the photos of you. Um, I just really want to get a clearer understanding for our viewing audience. A minor consideration, um, you must understand, as Paul is saying, it is so hard for a child star that's had a long run, even a, a show that's been on for a few years, it's hard for them to readjust for them to get right. reacquainted in, in the real world and not having agents and managers and publicists and people thinking for you um, and mauling you and mobbing you for autographs and paparazzi, then all of a sudden when the show was canceled, dead silence. That's right. And that's when, boom, that's when depression hits, that's when hurt, low self-worth, low self-esteem hits, that's right. and that's when so many of them do turn, unfortunately, to the alcohol and drugs because sure. the pain of feeling like you're nobody after you were, quote, unquote, somebody hurt but so you, badly. The way out of the trap so is... So you are actually... Go ahead. Well, the way out of the trap is what in AA they call the higher power. Which you is know, God. Of course. Yep. Uh, because you need someone to turn over the guilt and the shame to so that you can proceed with your life. And the most helpful thing the kids in a minor consideration do, I, they're all my kids, we support each other. We are living proof that you can get through this transition and prosper And that on you the are somebody side. on and off all, the screen. All by yourself, you are a unique you individual in with a great story to tell. I love that organization. Thank you. I want to have you back on when we can talk to you for an hour. Sure. Maybe five hours. Because there's yes. so many wonderful <laughs> stories that Paul has in him. And he's very, very humble. He has helped truly rescue not just hundreds, probably thousands of child well, stars, actors. And, it may and be that number. Here's the most important thing, at least in California, the home of the entertainment business. The person who does the work now owns the money. So children can't be sold into entertainment slavery. So you've been the paladin, the paladin for all of these yeah. children, you and your forces. And I pray that you continue on Me with too. your journey on this victory road and that God bless you. We need to send up prayers 
for a minor consideration. You can Google. How can people contact well, you or find out more about a minor Google consideration? Google a minor consideration. Paul Peterson. I have three different Facebook Paul Peterson. pages. PaulPeterson.com. PaulPeterson.com. I have and that too. And that's S-E-N. Right. And uh, you can find me. And, and, of course, my phone is listed. Is uh, it? Well, yes. I wow. have to answer it. Somebody, people get in trouble at all hours. And somebody's got to answer the phone. And that's what we do. I'm losing it. Mm. Don't you cry. Wow. <laughs> Make that's me special. Cry. That's really, really good. That's, that's better than good. That's great what you do to help. Because no one stops and thinks when they go to a movie or watch a TV show. They don't think what, it doesn't even come into their minds what happens when that show is canceled. Right. What happens when the curtains close and it's over. No one even bothers to even think where does that child go from there right. and how do they get there. But you, Paul Peterson, are doing God's work with your wonderful team. I, I thank so. you, and, and I speak for all the children in show business and across the world. Thank you for standing up for the children thank and fighting for their rights and well, helping them to establish uh, and, and find their highway to holiness. We all need to understand that inside that young actor, that little actor, there's a kid. And kids, kids. they need nurturing. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And I pray that God gives you and your team strength to keep on keeping on doing you. what you're doing. Bless you. To baby. help. God bless you in everything you do. Thanks, and thank dear. you for taking the time to be with Absolutely. us today. My pleasure. And I want to end the show real quick, <coughs> as I always do. I offer everybody an opportunity to pray the RSVP prayer. God showed me a while back that the kingdom of heaven is like an event on earth, that any event you get invited to, you must RSVP, or your name's not written in the guest book, and there's no reserved seat. He said, tell everyone the kingdom of heaven is exactly the same. So if you want to guarantee yourself a seat in heaven and make sure your name is in God's guest book, which is called the book of life, let's pray that prayer. You want to repeat after me? <laughs> Heavenly Father, you can repeat after me if the band would. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. I come to you a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive all those who have sinned against me, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me so that I may spend eternity with you. With you. Please put my name in your book. Reserve me a seat. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you just want to say hello, you can contact me through leebenton.org. Thank you, Paul Peterson. We love you. God bless you. Everybody has a story to tell How you got to heaven When you came from hell Now I'm an overcomer Rising like the song